It's Sunday, and I'm going to try some experiments. Uh, first off, I'm going to mess around with meatballs. Now, I did some research, and you can see um, that we have burgers, meatballs, meatloaf, Salisbury steak, and a Hamburg steak. And it's like, what is the difference really between these things besides the shape, right? And so after reading a lot of recipes, here's my analysis, and I'm sure some people are going to disagree. Um, a meatball, so burger is just ground meat, and you shape it, and you cook it, right? All you do is season it. That's it. The rest of them do a little bit more than just seasoning. The meatball, you season it, but you also include breadcrumbs. A meatloaf, you season it, and you use soaked bread and egg. Uh, a Salisbury steak, you actually season it and you use onion and bell pepper in it, and you use a brown gravy. And finally, a Hamburg steak is just a bunless burger, so it's just a seasoned thing, and you're done. So those are all the different kind of, kind of patterns I found as I read through a ton of recipes. Now, I know a lot of my friends love to cook. Uh, my buddy Johnny Rubinetti, when he makes meatballs, he always puts soaked bed crumbs in it. He told me about that when we were very new friends. So, you know, and almost every one of these has onion in them. When you look up the recipes, there's almost always onion in meatballs and a meatloaf as well. Um, so here's my experiment. I'm going to go ahead and make turkey meatballs. I'm going to make them in two batches. Half of them are going to be the basic recipe, just meat seasoned with breadcrumbs. The second one, I'm going to zhuzh it up with, uh, with a couple of extra... Um, parts like um, I'm going to do some breadcrumbs in there and some egg in there and then I'll just compare how did my just uh, seasoned meatballs with breadcrumb compare to the ones that have egg and uh, and and soaked breadcrumbs let's find out to accompany my meatballs I'm going to do um, some cauliflower and for the cauliflower I am going to use an anchovy and um, and uh, some capers and some garlic uh, so that's going to be the flavorings for this and this pattern you can use on any vegetable and then you can roast it or you can saute uh, steam it in a saute pan so um, works for all that I'm gonna I'm gonna roast this today uh, with that uh, with that beautiful sauce um, one thing uh, I'm making uh, for lunch this week I'm making my stepmother Kay's um, pimento dip and it's really good but I'm gonna use it like a like a sandwich um, so I'm gonna make the pimento dip eat it like a sandwich it's so so yummy and that happens to use anchovy. So I'll need a half a tin of anchovies for that. And that's why I thought this would be a great little way to use up. So I'm actually using up the first half of this <laughs> ahead of time. So that's it. I got my cauliflower broken down. You can see it makes quite a bit. So I'm only going to make half of this um, for my veg. The other half, I'm going to go ahead and put that in this glass bowl here. And I'm going to save it. Um, I'm supposed to make enchiladas tomorrow. And I know that you can apparently make um, tortillas from uh, cauliflower. So I think I'll take half of this and try to make tortillas. And then I'll take the other half here and um, do my, uh, my anchovy experiment. All right, I think we're good. I'm gonna put half a can of anchovies into my skillet. And they're basically just gonna melt down. Um, oops, uh, that's the beauty of, of these anchovies is they're just a great ingredient um, because they kind of melt. So once these are melted down, then I'm going to add the garlic just to warm it up a little bit. And then I'll toss it with the, uh, oh, I'll put in some red pepper flake. Um, let's see, it's four. How many do I have in here? There's four left, I think. Yeah. Um, so next I will um, uh, get that melted down and go to the next step. You can see the uh, anchovy is largely melted down. I'm going to add a little bit of red pepper flake. And I'm going to go ahead and add the garlic now. And as soon as I add it, I'll give it maybe 20 seconds before I throw in the, uh, the actual cauliflower. There we go. Uh, that garlic press is awesome. I, it's actually easier to use when the garlic is still unpeeled because it's easier to clean it now. Oh my gosh, the smell is sublime right now. It's so good. Okay, I think that's everything. Oh, I'm going to add some capers. I wanted to add lemon juice, but I forgot to buy the lemon, so we'll just go with caper juice. Now, from here, you have a choice. Um, I'm going to throw in the, uh, the cauliflower, and then what I could do is I can either... Um, so, I'm going to toss the cauliflower with this beautiful sauce, and then you can either throw it in the oven and let it roast for half an hour, um, or you can um, add some uh, liquid, some water, some wine, uh, and just let it steam for maybe uh, 10, 12 minutes, maybe eight minutes, I have to look it up. 
Um, but you let it steam and then you're good to go. So you can steam it or you can roast it. Either one works. I'm gonna go ahead and roast it while I get onto my meatballs. Um, I'm also gonna roast my meatballs today. Like you can roast them or you can steam them. So I'm just gonna hit them with a little bit more olive oil, just like you would if you were roasting vegetables normally. And then I'm gonna just shove this in the oven and I can forget about this for half an hour. My friend Ruth said she saw a hack where they leave the skin on the onion so that, and they peel it backwards so that you have a little handle when you get to the nub end. I normally tilt it down and then just keep going, but uh, I thought I'd give this a try. So, you know, we start off normal, just cutting it down. And then, as you get closer to the end, you normally have to tilt the onion over to, uh, but now I can go all the way back to the wrapper and I don't have to tilt it down. Look at that, that's all that's left is this little bit. Voila, how cool is that? Thanks Ruth, that was fun. I think that's kind of cool. I've got my onion prepped, my onion and parsley prepped for the other meatball. I've got my Parmesan prepped. Uh, now I need breadcrumbs and um, I, I don't have bread, but I do have English muffins and I do have pita. And I've decided uh, I'm gonna go with an English muffin and uh, make that into my breadcrumb. So I've got my food processor here and uh, I'm gonna take these, um, these English muffins. I actually had these sitting on the burner above the oven, so they're they're actually kind of dried out now. So perfect. Let's get this going. So, voila, my English muffin. I only did half. I see. I'm, I didn't know how much it would yield, but uh, that's a pretty good amount of breadcrumb right there. I need. Um, I think I just need a quarter cup. No, yeah, half cup. Yeah, half cup. All right. So if I don't have a half cup, then I'll go ahead and make the other one. The cauliflower is done. What's cool about this dish is that they recommend serving at room temperature. So it's ready to go. I'm gonna try it piping hot. Ooh, 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 hot. Oh, wow. Mm. That anchovy doesn't taste like anchovy. It just tastes like salt. Um, but it's a it's an interesting salt. It's just got a little hint of extra flavor. Really, really cool. Uh, again, I don't think people would know it was anchovy unless they're familiar with that profile. So um, that's done. I'm just gonna let it sit there while I do my meatballs. Also, I just started stirring this up and all those beautiful bits on the bottom, look how they've coated the cauliflower after this final stir that I gave it, right? And then there'll be a little bit left on the pan. I'll just sprinkle that on top. Oh, that's gonna be really fun. I have my two half pounds of ground turkey. So in the more complicated one, we've got our milk soap breadcrumbs. In they go. And we have some egg, some Parmesan, parsley, and onion. And that is everything. For the other one, I am putting in onion because onion is such a bold flavor in a meatball. I don't think I'd ever make them without, so I'm continuing that base. And I really should have used dry bread crumbs but I got carried away and made two wet ones by accident. So that kind of disappointing. I, I really would like to have um, compared dry breadcrumb versus wet. Um, so that'll have to be a future experiment. But there we go. How will these two differ? We're going to find out. Let me get this stirred up. My two styles of meatballs are ready to go. Uh, these that had didn't have the egg were a lot easier to portion out. These are two tablespoons that I you can see on that one there. It's holding the shape. Um, so they're all two tablespoon meatballs. Now I'm gonna start shaping them. Um, but uh, I definitely find the simple ones a little easier to work with. They're just not so sticky. Um, they seem to hold their shape. Um, so that's an interesting side effect. That doesn't mean they're gonna taste better or have a better texture. Um, Almost done here. This is kind of fun. I like this part. So you take these, you know, blobs of two tablespoons. Two tablespoons seems like a good size. I didn't really know. Um, I tried a quarter cup and they were gigantic. So, and then I went to two tablespoons. Maybe even do one tablespoon meatballs. But these two tablespoon ones look pretty good. So there they are. All nice and rolled up. It's helpful if you just wet your hands once in a while. And that gets, uh, that gets the meatballs to behave better in your hands. But I think those look pretty good. Into the oven they go. Get those cooked up. Can't wait. All that hard work is about to pay off. 
It is kind of monochromatic. Probably a little parsley on top would, would break up the all gray kind of color of this thing. But there we go. I made a sauce out of uh, Greek yogurt, lemon, uh, some of that mustard I got from uh, my friend Jan Botero. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's got some uh, champagne vinegar as well. And it's really yummy. But So I'm going to do the two meatballs now. So first I'm going to try the basic meatball that had very little um, stuff in it. I did use a soap breadcrumb. That is absolutely delicious. I love it. Mm. Hmm. By the way, 25 minutes was too long in the oven. Um, they, they came up to 180, and 160 would have been fine. I measured them at the very end, so it was too late. All right, now, this one has... Now, this is the one that has Parmesan cheese in it, uh, fresh grated. It's got egg as well as a binder. Garlic. whoa yeah way way better the flavor is completely different the garlic in there the uh, the, uh, the parsley's in there um and the texture is different too that that uh that egg must really do something um yeah so just onion is good but um but boy <laughs> if you put in that the garlic and the um and the parmesan and all that it completely transforms texture and flavor. So for me, I'll do the more complicated version from now on. No more need to experiment there. Um, the ones without it, are they're, they're good. They're delicious, right? It's a meatball. But... So there you have it. Um, meatball from... Oh, by the way, that onion trick, I totally forgot. It wasn't Ruth. It was actually my sister, Lisa, who turned me on to that. So I apologize for that, Lisa. Um, but yeah, Lisa's the one who taught me that cool little onion trick. I'll probably try that again sometime. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to have me a delicious meal.